This is an array. It is a data structure with a collection of elements of the same data type. And this is an array question on lead code, which is asking us to find the indices of two numbers that will add up to a target value which is already given to us. If you thought that you are not smart enough to solve this question, well, that's not the case because you don't know these algorithms that will help you to solve any array questions. And today I am here to teach you just that. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. The very first algorithm which will help us to solve any array question is two pointers. Two pointers is an algorithm that is primarily used to solve arrays, linked lists, or strings. The idea behind two pointers is to use two distinct pointers to traverse through the data structure, usually from different directions at different speed. Two pointers are really yeah. useful for solving problems efficiently by reducing the need for nested loops which can otherwise increase the time complexity. There are two variations of two pointers. The very first variation involves having one pointer at the start of the array and another one at the end of the array. Depending on the question, we will either move the left pointer forward or the left pointer backward until we find the desired pair of sum. And the second variation is to have a slow and a fast pointer. Here we will use two pointers that will traverse through the array in different speed. Typically one pointer will go through the array and when it reaches the end of the array, the slow pointer is moved forward and this continues. Let us use two pointers to solve one of my favorite questions on lead code. Question 11, container with most water. Despite the medium tag, this question is really easy to solve. You are given an array height of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn such that two end points of the height line are i, 0, and i, height i. Find two lines that together with x-axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water a container can store. The best way to understand this question is to imagine a bunch of sticks with the same height as the values of our array. If the first element of the array is 1, the first stick is going to have a height of 1. Now we need to find the maximum area between these sticks so that we can store the maximum amount of water. Hence the name container with most water. I hope it makes sense to you. Now moving on to the solution. The very first step is to set the pointer. We will have two pointers i and j. i will be at the beginning of the array and j will be at the end of the array. Then we will set the area to 0. Next we will compare i and j using a while loop. This while loop is only comparing the indices of i and j so we will have an if else statement which will compare i and j. Now we will calculate the area. Since this is a rectangle we will use the area formula for rectangle which is length times height. We will also have a max function because we want to find the max area and then we are going to increment i to the next index. In the else part we will find the area for height j as if our condition becomes false in the future we might have to decrement j and find the height for j and at last we will return area. The next algorithm is even a simpler one and it is called a hash table or a hash map. So what is a hash table? A hash map or a hash table is basically a dictionary that has the ability to store more than one values in a point. You can think of hash table as a special kind of array but instead of being a simple horizontal array with each item having a specific position, a hash table is more like a vertical list or a collection of slots each identified by a unique key. The key is used to determine where the data should be stored. What makes a hash table special is how it handles something called collisions. A collision happens when two different keys get mapped to the same slot or index in the hash table. Instead of overriding the existing data, the hash table uses a technique called chaining where the slots are stored as a linked list of all the data that hashes to that index. This way we can store and access multiple objects at the same index efficiently. Let's move to a simple question to understand how this works. We will be solving the two-sum question which is the vanilla lead code question. You are given an array of length n and you are given a target. And you will have to return the index of two integers that will add up to the target. Let's look at how the code will look like. At first, we will define the hash map. A hash map is basically a dictionary in its syntax but just works different. Then we will have a pointer i that will go through the given array using a for loop. Next, we will find the complement which is the number whose sum will help us get to the target. Then we will have an if else statement where we will check if the complement is in the hash map and if it is then we will return it and in the else part we will add the integers and the indexes to the hash map from the array. The last algorithm that will help you to solve array questions is binary search. 
when I first came across the name of this algorithm, I thought that it was a very complex algorithm, but it's not the case. It's really an easy algorithm that we use almost every single day. Let me explain it to you. Let's say you open a dictionary to look up a word that you keep hearing the cool kids at school use. Riz. You open the dictionary in the middle, then you go to the page where there are words that start with the letter R and scan for the word Riz. What you did is nothing but binary search. This is exactly how a binary search works, but instead of going through a dictionary, it will go through an array of course. Let's look at how we can use it to solve a lead code question. Question 33, search in rotated array. We are given a sorted array which is rotated and are given a target value. And if that target value is in our array, we will have to return the index of that target. And if not, we will have to return negative one. Let's look at how the code will look like. The very first step would be to initialize three things n which will be the length of the array then we will have two pointers low and high low will be set to zero which is the first element of the array and high will be set to n minus one which is the last element of the array next we will have a while loop that will continue on until low is less than or equal to high and we will also calculate the middle of the array to perform the binary search we will calculate the middle by adding low and high and dividing it with 2 to get the middle. If somehow the value in the middle is equal to the target, we will return it. Next, we move on to the core logic of the binary search algorithm. First, we will compare if our lowest value aka the leftmost value is less than or equal to the middle values. If yes, we will have a nested loop where we will see if low is less than the target and target is less than the middle which basically means that the target is in the first half of the array. If yes, we will reduce the search area to the middle and if no, we will increase the search area and if our condition of target containing in the first half is wrong, we will move the search area to the other half. And if our condition is true, we will increase the search area by adding one to the middle and if not, we will reduce the search area by subtracting one from high. And at last, we will return negative one. Okay, so here is a simple animation that I made to showcase how the binary search will work with an example. Let's look at this. Well, that were the three algorithms that will help you to solve most array questions. Some array questions might also require you to have knowledge of some other algorithms, but for the most of them, you can just solve them using some basic logic. If you didn't understand anything or thought that I made a mistake in explaining something, please feel free to point it out in the comments. And if you have made this far into this boring video, please tell me if I should continue on making these types of videos where I make videos on how you can solve a certain type of problem. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and I am out.